What's going on guys, Ava here and welcome back to the Pit Lane Podcast, episode number 59 today to review the Italian Grand Prix, You're joined by usual hosts, myself, Callum and Tom, a few days uh, after the actual Grand Prix obviously, but uh, I think by now, I think, you know, there's no rush to actually get to these reviews, it lets us soak it in a little bit more, see any kind of post-race kind of, you know, let the dust settle as it were, and after the dust has settled guys, what are we thinking about that Italian Grand Prix, obviously an upset for Ferrari, very dominant win for the two Mercedes guys, both turned down their engines. But there was some excitement within that behind them. Yeah, it was um, kind of probably better than the average Italian Grand Prix. They have been quite mediocre the past couple of years. But um, it uh, did quite surprise me because I was watching our predictions for the Italian Grand Prix. Yes. And boy, <laughs> were we wrong. We all predicted Vettel to win and Mercedes, let's be honest, kind of shat on Ferrari. Let's really be honest here. Yeah, I yeah. think we yeah completely got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I got tweeted that mid race like your prediction is so wrong. It's like yeah, I know we like we we bought into what Ferrari was saying about oh they've got like maybe you know new little engine bit here. They're looking good. They're confident from Spa, but then Mercedes came knocking with their engines, turning them up, and then later well, on in the race, Rebel. turn them down. Where did Red Bull come from? Oh no, yeah, they were the looking very five. good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, we all, I mean, YouTube almost got Ocon, to be fair. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. High five. But, <laughs> yeah, my Hulkenberg prediction was a bit off. <laughs> that Wait, was piss poor. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, she did Hulkenberg. say Hulkenberg. Yeah, he finished yes, a lap down in P13. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't really go for a plan. But um, it, it was a decent race. Um, more of a than last year. Uh, definitely an improvement on last year's race. But I just wish it had been a bit closer. Um... Now going into Singapore, you have to wonder, obviously, Ferrari will try and probably will bounce back unless Mercedes have found what they've been missing around that circuit, which is still a big interrogation mark. But, um, yeah, yeah, Lewis sure. Hamilton, the first back-to-back race winner this season, now well into the second half of the season. So, um, interesting start coming out of that race and uh, what a way to do it, playing the villain at Ferrari's backyard. <laughs> Very interesting, yeah. that is, actually, isn't it? Back to, first back-to-back. Yeah. Back. Like, that just goes to show how close the championship is between a set of drivers and the fact that it was it was pretty much a flawless weekend for Mercedes. I think I've never seen a weekend so perfectly executed by Mercedes before. Just, it, 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 if Bottas was on the front row, I think it would have been their all-time best weekend ever, really. Because yeah. of, of this season, definitely. And that is ha- has obviously led to people saying that Italy was probably the worst race of the season or second worst to Russia. And I kind of put some question marks over that because there was some decent battling throughout the field. Yeah, no. Obviously, Red Bulls are the huge one on that one. But even still, with the four Indias, the Williams getting involved as well, and also the Salvas. Even the Salvas were giving <laughs> us a little bit of action. So the fact that we had battling up and down the field, of course, like Tom said, we kind of wish it was a little bit closer. And obviously, after the last podcast, we were all raving about Spa because it was just so on the limit, so on the edge. And the fact that Mercedes could turn their engines down and Hamilton and Bottas saying, yeah, we are pace in hand. Like, we, weren't, we weren't pushing anymore. It does kind of question it. But I do think that Italy is the one-off. I well, do like, think it is basically an back oval. to where we were. Like, it plays right into oh, yeah. hands. Like, even Vettel was like, yeah, you, you guys weren't pushing at all, weren't you? So, yeah, I mean, it's like that, it's like that blip in the season, I feel. Because I think it will kind of return to a closer, a very close fight at Singapore. Like Tom said, it, that's the real big question mark for Mercedes. Um... I don't know though. They they looked so confident, like post race, like in that interview room when Lewis was talking to his like one of the race members. Like they just there was that aura of like pure confidence that they'd finally nailed this car that weekend. That that gives them the, the kind of confidence boost going to Singapore. Let's see if it's going to be another 2015 kind of go there. Kind of uh oh, don't know what the, what's happening with the tires, something like that. Uh oh, um, yeah. But obviously, we talked we've talked about the race a little bit right now. We haven't I even to really talk mentioned. About we haven't yeah. mentioned, even though maybe it wasn't like the electric race. It was definitely electric qualifying. We had to wait a while for it. Like I didn't. <laughs> well, you didn't. You're you're at work. Like all I actually people... managed to get to watch qualifying for. To be fair, highlights from qualifying is just the fact that we saw Hamilton and Bottas playing on the PS4. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I thought that that was classic. That's what I love though about this new like this new kind of almost generation of Formula One is the fact that. The drivers can be kind of just let loose a little bit. And it just goes to show how good they are, especially from Hamilton. The fact that he was on the brink of oh, you know. getting the all-time record for four positions. And 45 minutes before, he was playing Charles Fusion. 
Yeah. Vulture yeah. Bottas. That just even goes right to at the end of the live stream, sometimes. like I don't know if you caught it. Like at the end of his live stream, it was like like some member came in and said, "Like Lewis, it's like ten minutes to we have to go back in the car." He's like, "All right," and he just takes his jolly time, like going back to like to his phone, like. Right, guys. Uh, I guess I guess I better go then. Um, you know, gotta do no my rush. thing. <laughs> gotta do my thing. So cash, and then he goes out and smashes pole, and literally just like the lap, like looking at the lap is just a great, fantastic lap in what were very tricky conditions. And then, as we mentioned, the Red Bulls turned up in quali. Mad madness. Obviously, they had the penalties. Everyone had loads of penalties, which we'll get into as well, I'm sure. Um, but the Red Bulls look obviously. They, they'd use their advantage of, okay, it's raining. The power doesn't matter too much, so let's go out there. And then Lance Stroll, I think big GGs. Also, it's kind of funnily enough, like Hamilton, kind of very casual about it. He was just like in his interview, like, I didn't, I've never driven the car yeah. in the wet, so I just chucked it about, which is like kind of funny to hear. Like, just, I just chucked well, it about. He chucks it about more than he <laughs> usually does. When he's <laughs> wrestling it left and right and everything. But yeah. Um, no, just, I think just a little point is probably what we can speak about now is just the fact that we, in, in terms of Hamilton, Ocon, and Stroll, the fact that they excelled in them conditions. Monza is not an easy circuit in the dry whatsoever. In the wet, it's a complete different story. It's even worse. So the fact that them three drivers excelled in them conditions, along with obviously Verstappen and Ricardo really pushing that Rebel to the limit, it really does separate the men for the boys. And I think that's what we were all kind of happy about. Everyone woke up and saw, oh yeah, it's going to be a wet qualifying because it really does push the drivers to the limit. It's not like, there are, obviously every track is difficult in the wet, but Monza... It's just that something special which really does push the driver. Yeah. I thought um, qualifying hid, especially because of their penalties, it hid a, a big um, a big statement, for, in my opinion, and also the race highlighted it. Red Bull look hugely impressive this weekend. Um, on reflection, they were quick. Like, I'm talking seriously quick. I get Ricardo had the different tyre strategy in the race, but even Verstappen as well had a really good pace. And um, if they convert that to Singapore, you have to wonder, like, if Mercedes have this big interrogation mark and they don't get it set, like, sorted for Singapore, I think we could see Red Bull in the mix here. Um, I was very impressed by them all weekend. You know, in qualifying, it, it looks like it could have, if they had the penalties, it would have been a Red Bull 2-3 in Q3. Mm. So, um they would have started the race from those positions and who knows what could have happened, especially with Ricardo liking his dives into turn one. So, um, I, I, mean, I was very them. impressed with Red Bull. Like, like, not scared, but I was, um, I'd be like, oh, okay, I see you there. <laughs> yeah, I, I see you. Right. I see you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, both I of them were great under breaks. Like, even with yeah. when he was actually, when we actually saw him on the live feed as well, like, both of them, like, the commentators even, like, you know, mention it. They, they look very solid on the brakes. Like from so, like Ricardo's obviously was from so far back, but even Verstappen was making some really great moves from so far. And I think that's probably what helped them auto in quality, not just the aero stuff, but just under braking in those tricky conditions. So like you said, Tom, in Singapore, obviously last year it was basically a case of we needed a few more laps to maybe see Ricardo chase down Rosberg. Um, so yeah, it could be a very you know tasty one if Merck don't get it right completely. Yeah. Red Bull exactly. basically showed Ferrari what a car is like when it's when a driver can put confidence in their own car. Obviously, Mercedes are at another level. Let's we'll put Mercedes to the side on this one because they were just ridiculous in a straight line. But the fact that Red Bull with a straight line speed deficit, but the fact that the cars were confident, the drivers were confident to push their cars into braking. Obviously, that's where the most amount of time you're going to pick up around Monza. So that obviously, and the Ferraris, well. Pfft, Let's not even talk about them because, like, what what is it good to really bring out from that weekend? They got trapped, like, I got absolutely trumped on their own circuit at home, and yeah. the fact that qualifying it's, it's not like it was just one well, driver. Quali was very weird. Both like, of they, them were out of this the equation. They just completely. couldn't turn on the inter or the full wet tire at all. Like it's like, it's like they just couldn't get that temperature window. That mm. if you go out, we we heard if you go out that window, it's just you just may as well give up once you've gone out the window. It's hard to bring it back in. And it's like they just, the car just didn't switch it on at all. Like, we're tr- they were trundling around in the last part of quality. And we're like, w- are they going to turn up soon? Like, surely, like, it fell across the line. Oh, oh, it's only, like, P8 or something at the time. Yeah. It was very odd, very odd. I think that we come a bit weird. Rockin' had some mysterious issues since early on. Both did, And though. then Vettel apparently yeah. had the same thing he had when he had the steering wheel put into one side again. This time to the, to the left. So that sort of, he said, like, 
a track like Monza, which is so challenging, especially because there's such little corners, so you have to be so good, like on the brakes every single corner, and yeah. be so precise because of this small little of obviously offset on the steering wheel that you had compared to like what we had a few races ago in, um, I think it was uh, Hungary. Um, yeah, the same thing again. Just doesn't ena- it didn't enable him to really um, get that extra couple of tenths, you know, half a second out of the car. So that's Do you what that's because of curbs. Like this might be a wild statement, but well, on the race, he is quite aggressive. In the race, he there. said he went off. Like in the in the latter stage, he was like, "I went off." And then he had an off, yeah. Because like, I remember seeing we didn't um, see Ricardo I don't think when we he saw was it, catching. Right? No, 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 no. But when Ricardo was catching, you know, when the display the time delta was at the bottom, like every lap, what he's gained. Yeah, he gained no a big chunk. Thing, but there was there was a lap where he Ricardo gained two point nine on Vettel. Yeah, yeah. On one of the laps, he, had he was like chasing down. So something happened. No one ever showed him. He said. He yeah. said, like, the car felt very different then. and Basically, he had to kind of just back off a little bit and just basically go to the end and just take it easy. And then that's when he was like, well, you guys were taking it easy, weren't you, as well? So the two Mercs. So, yeah, that was a little bit problematic. He, that's he why had Ricardo... some good pace, though. He still had a good pace. I remember, I mean, was it two laps from the end? Like, Ricardo was doing some stupid lap times, but then Vettel put in, like, a really solid one minute 23. I saw a I tweet. It was. I saw a tweet and, by, uh, like, just a journalist. To sort of back him off. Whereas, like, two laps at the end, like you said, like, he was, like, tweeting, like, oh, Fry seems to have turned up the engine now because Vettel's going a little bit faster now. He's just taken back, like, half a second. So it was maybe a bit of management of a kind of, like, we're not going to get second, so we may as well save the car. Yeah, that's what I think that also... It. Yeah, because, like, they knew on the day with the niggling issues where both cars had, they were like, yeah, we're not going to really realistically beat Mercedes, so let's just be smart here. Let's try... And you know, maintain yeah. the engine around a track that puts a lot of strain on the power unit, For sure. and uh, just try and go again. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of um, interesting conclusions from that race. Um, but the one thing we can gather from that is that Mercedes look. Um, they, 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 ever since Silverstone, I mean, I know that one at Hungary, at Hungary, but Mercedes just seem to be finding a little bit of um, form, just a consistency about them. Bring their consistency. Step. They, they, they've yeah. taken a step forward, definitely. And I think Ferrari have kind of been left in a little bit of the dust because, yeah, like you say, Silverstone, Mercedes, like well, obviously we were there. They, the cars looked on it. The cars did look very good. Yeah. Hungary, I think we was always going to expect Ferrari to turn up there because obviously they had links with Monaco. This is obviously why we've spoken so much about Singapore and the fact that Ferrari could be right there. Obviously, there's a few more straights around Singapore, but it's still not power hungry. Um, but it's why I think it's why it's. I think we, we was always. If you look at look at it on paper, Ferrari have won the races that they should have won, and Mercedes have won yeah, the races that they exactly, should have won. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why going into the, this half the season, this is why I think Vettel was the one who went. Uh, yeah, the car might be this, 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 that, and the other. And Mercedes might be this, that, and the other. But there's racing still involved. There's still that extra something added into the mix which of unpredictability which i think i don't know whether he's banking on but he did throw it out there i think it was in the race con- uh, post race conference um so i don't know whether vettel is kind of hoping for a little bit of bad luck for hamilton because obviously neither have had any sort of engine issues yet obviously that was probably one of the reasons why hamilton lost last year's championship so it's we have still got that that added mixture in but obviously going into singapore We've got the we've got a track which Mercedes have always been quite bogey at. Obviously, last year they finally pulled it back, but I don't know. I, I think we're, we're all quite ready now just to see because it's just like little punches yeah. here and there of like on paper. Like, also, with Mercedes, when Hamilton went, oh yeah, Mercedes power is miles better than Ferrari <laughs> on the podium. Like <laughs> I, we're probably not going to talk about booing because that's just sport. That's just how it works. Um, but. You know, like these little punches here and there, and how, like Vettel going, oh, well, there's a little bit of racing involved. I don't know. Mm. I think they're trying to spice it up a little bit. I think on paper, the tracks that that are left, suit, there's more that suit Mercedes than that suit Ferrari. So Ferrari need to find something in the next few races to try and make off the deficit. Obviously, there won't be a track as bad as Italy. Um, but overall, the battle is very interesting. And I think I would like to see, like, regardless of who you support or whoever I support, um, I think we all want to see Ferrari bounce back at Singapore, and I personally do want to see Vettel win just to keep the championship open. What's and, like, you know, it just keeps still make you realise that they're still there. Exactly. So, um, yeah. I think everyone wants to see that. In terms of other things, obviously we saw at Monza, um, 
I haven't got the race results in front of me, but I do know that obviously we had uh, the interesting force in the Williams battle. Uh, a little bit of icing, dicing between the two Williams cars on the last up of the race, but uh, in the end, I think straight ass speed prevailed and DRS meant absolutely nothing as all four cars didn't really do much overtaking in the end and uh, Ocon leading a uh, couple of Williams and his teammate home. So that battle was still fairly interesting for the midfield. Obviously, um, those guys battling for as many points as possible. But Force India look... Um, they look really solid. They've been well, really still again all season. season. Well, I didn't realise how much finish. gap they had in the championship. I really didn't realise how far yeah, no, ahead they, they were in fourth assumed. place. Like Williams were like like Lance was very happy with their finish afterwards. Like surprisingly, kind of you know to say he was on the front row and came a uh, seventh. But the fact they just got a double points finish finally um, to kind of sort of start to maybe even attempt to make a charge back because yeah, Force India's gap is 113 to 55. Like. Force India have been on it. They've been so. That's why they're, they're so annoyed from Spa because they have been super consistent, and it's that consistency that's going to seal them a pretty big fourth place for them as a team. Yeah, back to back so, fourth places. Yeah, which well, is, it'll be um, huge. Um, huge. Yeah. So that was that far. Yeah, as you said. Yeah, just kind of D- DRSing again. I think uh, the, even the Williams like Twitter guys were kind of like reusing the same gifts for like every time they got DRS. <laughs> it was like, all right, time to DRS up again. T- <laughs> t- try again. Yeah, t- <laughs> try again. again. Like, but you can do this. You can do. It this. was interesting actually because when I saw that battle, I was like, hmm, maybe Stroll will let Master through and maybe have a go at Ocon. But then they just didn't really bother. And then obviously Massa did try and overtake Stroll at the end. I was like, God, of all the things you need to do right now, is yeah. not let that bloody force in there behind uh, pass. Because uh, a word on Perez, he had a good race, actually, uh, to say he had, I think he had a bit of damage at the start of the race. But Ocon, like, uh, just word on force in there, obviously, we, there's a lot of controversy coming off the back of Spa. And fair play to them, because they're very, very mature coming back off the back of all them incidents and everything, and the fact that they were both sat next to each other in the press conference, or no, sat in between, with in between, said, in between yeah. <laughs> uh, which obviously brought in a couple of memes from that one. Yeah. But the fact that both of them were just like, you know what, it happened, we're sorry, let's just crack on because yeah. it's all about the team at the minute. And I mean, props to their PR the, people, probably, that must have been oh, a yeah, yeah. rehearse line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously, I bet they rehearsed some lines quite well. But the fact that Ocon got a sick from third, that's pretty much perfect. Perez, a little bit disappointed he got not tight in Q2. And I think he would have been up there as well with Ocon in qualifying. So, ideal weekend for Force India, really. Literally ideal about bouncing back. Yeah. And I think they scored the exact same amount as points of Williams. So, no gain or loss, really, in terms of their fourth place. But um, no, it's that, getting I think. interesting in the championship behind them between Haas, Renault, Torosso. And I'm missing a team, or am I not? I know, and I think they're quite close to Williams as well. Uh, so it's, it's really starting to bubble up behind. And obviously, um, with little issues here and there, for, like, for example, for Haas, like, for Renault, like, Haas, Renault, and Torosso had pretty poor weekends like, yeah, on the whole, them, really. Yeah, all them. All them. Torosso had a really poor weekend. But that was expected, though. I think it was Could be yeah, actually put in a really good performance this weekend. Could be put in a shift. You put in a good shift this weekend. Um, Haas, nothing that I can remember. So I don't think Grosjean's I saw the most apart from Grosjean. in Q1. Apart from apart, Grosjean's incident, yeah, apart from yeah. And um, Renault, um, I expected more from them this week. Even the Renaults. I, I didn't really see, did. I, didn't I, th- I expected a lot more. I um, didn't see Hulkenberg at that entire race. We saw Palmer a lot because of his whole with Alonso thing, but I don't think I yeah. even saw Hulk. I don't remember seeing Hulkenberg no. much in that race. So, well, yeah. thing is we saw Hulkenberg at Spa like bring it home in really, really great, really comfortably. Yeah. And absolutely nowhere this weekend, and he obviously like he came really early in the race for like an early pit stop, and after that he's the first one to pit into softs, I think, on a two stop strategy or a one stop, I'm not sure. But after that pit stop, he just disappeared. So um, yeah, Renault just uh, first time like we've, they've gone. To, I think like, that's majorly missing this race. That's the that's the difference from the Red Bull chassis to the Renault chassis. Like Red Bull can run such lower wings that the Renault engine is in such a deficit, and maybe also a bit of race strategy, like you said, maybe. They didn't get it as right, you know. Yeah, they and, lost the car early on, obviously. Yeah, they lost the car. Palmer, the ca- so. they, they lost that car as well. And then also, yeah, just chassis-wise, you know, under braking, that Red Bull was just another level compared to the Renault. So it's quite interesting. A, to be fair, Tom, how you point out the fact that Hulkenberg had such a good weekend in Spa and then dropped so badly in Monza. Because it's like, you think about it, I've always thought of Monza and Spa being very similar sort of circuits. But I think more with these regs, they've really highlighted that that middle sector in Spa means that if you have got a good car in the middle sector, you can make 
up the rest of the lap yeah. in that middle well, section or a spa. I think Renault uh, well, Monza, sorry, had a weird just, one. You've got to be arrow straight, just bullet quick in a straight yeah. line. I mean, I know it's an arrow, but at the same time, it's like, I can't imagine the setups being too much different to Spa. And I mean, Renault performed, like, Hulkenberg performed really, really well. Even Palmer, like, he was, he, he got into Q3. And obviously, you've got that middle sector, which is pretty good aero dependent sector. So, I don't know. Weird one. They just absolutely know where this weekend. I, I do associate Renault with what we have in the, like, in the F1 game. They're just a pretty fast car on a straight line with a little bit of downforce on them. That is what I associate them with in real life. They're actually pretty quick on a straight line. Like, if you look at the speed traps, they're pretty well, damn Red quick. Well, Red Bull up there. were the quickest so, uh, cars in the yeah. speed traps. <laughs> exactly. Which is they, they had right up the arse of someone. They, they had them, their thinnest right. rear wings out of the whole grid. So um, that goes to show you what low downfalls can do. And obviously, finally, uh, McLaren. Um, quietly Double. impressive in many ways for me. Um, especially in qualifying. Van Dorn, oh, okay, really, quality, yeah. um, I, I've been a critic of Van Dorn this season. But in, in Belgium, he had a good performance in qualifying. And in Monza, he really pulled one out of the bag. Obviously, apparently Alonso in the post-qualifying interview said that um, he wasn't going to bother pushing too much because at the time, he knew he was getting a grip penalty and he didn't want to kill the engine off, whereas Van yeah, Dorn yeah. obviously didn't know, so he yeah, was a bit more on it. But, for qualifying, um, it was just the, it was a matter of the fact that you needed the experience and the ever-changing ever conditions. So the fact that Alonso was sat in the garage for the first half of Q2... Probably didn't help his chances. Yeah, exactly. Q three, but still, like, you can't take anything away from Van Dorn because he had a solid, solid performance. And apparently, that was the first time that he's been fuming getting out of the car when an engine has failed. Oh yeah, no. He, yeah, Ted I Kravitz that. said that. And yeah, that was surprising. To be fair, like as much as we see Alonso be pushed, and like, obviously he he had his fair share of anger. I think that's Palmer. the break point. You know that, that things that's, are going You know like, it's bad. Annoying. Obviously, yeah, because everyone's trying to please. Everyone's like, oh, you need to please Alonso. You need to please Alonso. What about Van Dorn? Because yeah. he's a racer. He's a driver. He's not, obviously, the youngest on the grid. Obviously, he's still one of the younger drivers, but he still wants to crack on with his career. And the fact that he's retiring every race and having to take 25... Like, bearing in mind that he took a gearbox penalty... Uh, sorry, he took an engine penalty in Spa, an engine penalty in Monza, and his engine still failed. It was a brand new engine. And yeah. he still bloody fails. Like, you can see why he gets so frustrated all the time. So, yeah. once McLaren... Well, even then, have both then in the race, gone, then, he was, in the race, it was a good race. And then it failed, like, the new one failed, like, two failures then, basically, this, this it's race. It's terrible. Yeah. That's honestly. terrible. Uh, That's terrible. We we woke up today and the rumour the rumor mill was, uh, was very active. Um, mm -hmm. It was meant to hear confirmation that McLaren was switching to Renault power today. For 2018, that has not been announced. Um, Alonso dropped a few post race interviews, especially one on a Spanish TV, which I watched. Um, there will be plenty of news regarding both Alonso's future and also McLaren throughout this yeah. week. So, as previous, Alonso... this podcast will probably get uploaded to, like tomorrow on Tuesday, <laughs> yeah, no, and then us. half an hour yeah. later, no McLaren will us. break up with McLaren Honda. So, no uh, you, ever... you heard it here first. Did, <laughs> Did you hear Alonso's interview when he said, "Oh, right, so what's the uh, future like for Fernando Alonso?" And he was like, "Oh, well, lots of news is being." Oh, you know, yeah, yeah I saw that. He was like, he started the car and he, started he was just name dropping off. every List... series possible. GP two, just like, <laughs> oh, I like the new GP two car. That looks nice. Basically, <laughs> name dropping everything. And he, he is really analysing his options. And a lot of, I'm probably going to get a little bit of hate for speaking so much about uh, Alonso and McLaren, but they're quite a hot topic because they are a big team and they've got a shit engine still. So we want to see how they get back to the front. But uh, Zach Brown, he said they're still in, in talks with Renault, um, even though I think Saturday night they said that it broke. the talks have broken down. It's so a case was, of like if they're to one. supply them, it would basically mean that there needs to be some smoothing over and there needs to be a Toros or Honda deal so that yeah, Renault yeah that's the main actually... one well, there's there's an underlying rumour here um, obviously we've got the whole rumour of the F1 bosses wanting to help Honda to stay in the sport there's a constant talk that won't go away of Toros so partnering up with Honda and the long rumour is and the, the paddock rumour is Red Bull wants to be world champions again the only way they will achieve that is with the Honda power unit if that becomes competitive Hence, while they want to supply their B team to do the testing for them. And then once that, if that thing's up to scratch, Red Bull will switch. There's also a rumor that McLaren are going to try and produce their own power unit for 2021 engine regulation changes, which is something they that... do that anyway, though, with road cars. It's, some, it's something yeah. that I've um, 
McLaren engines is something that I, for years, I've wondered why have they not stopped, like got to that point yet. And I think now they've only just seen the line and realised, what if we just build our own power is unit? Is it the McLaren so, P1 um, that's got their yeah. own recovery recovery system in it? It's literally like, it's taken Formula 1 technology and McLaren have made it themselves. So why don't McLaren yeah. make their own Formula 1 engines? Like, you do, you, do, you, so, do, you kind of ask. Although, there is that link anyway between... Obviously, McLaren and like obviously McLaren is basically directly Honda. Technically, like they get pretty much quite a good mm. look over the, the the Honda engine. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. There's a lot it's... of talks on the table right now. There's a lot of interesting ways it could go, for sure. I think I can see Honda, even though like I can see Honda not being in F1 next year, but still being part of F1 in the sense that they will still be developing power units, but they won't have a team to like Why, use though? them. Like, why would they bother? Like, I that's the thing. That, that this is the big thing for Honda now, isn't it? Because it's like Ted Kravitz said that Honda could sue McLaren if they break the contract. And yeah, fair play. I think McLaren will just be like, yeah, well, whatever. We'll, yeah, we'll pay a bit of money and just to get rid of you, to be honest. But it's also, if you noticed that it's also made the rumor mill in the uh, the drivers a little bit more interesting as well, because there's been links with Science going to McLaren, as well as also Science going to Renault. That's been a link as well. Um, there's been a, there's been one other one as well. I can't remember what it is, but there's been a it, it has added a little bit more interest in there because it's like Alonso said a while ago. Wait until September to see what what my reaction is going to be. Here we are in September. Um, <laughs> there you Where, go. Where's where's this? It's where is time this? Time now. It's time. It's time. <laughs> so I guess we're, we're all wrong, patiently waiting just to see what yeah. happens. The news is meant to come this week, all sorts of news. So I guess in that regard, they weren't wrong. So I guess we'll hear a lot of information as this podcast goes up tomorrow. Yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, that's yeah gonna, I think yeah, I think from, we've I think very from McLaren, bad we've wrapped it up for now. Um, we don't want to piss. You know what's going to happen? What's going to happen is all right. So this this we're recording this on a Tuesday. This is no, we're recording this on a Monday. Monday sorry, Monday. this is going up on a Tuesday. It will probably go up as I'm fly. I'm on a flight to Sweden. I'm probably going to put the podcast up just as I leave and get on the plane. So what's going to happen is mid air, while I'm unaware, that news is going to drop, and you two are going to be watching it, going like, "Oh, the podcast just gone live. Oh, the news has dropped." Oh, oh. <laughs> Classic. oh can we talk a little bit about incidents? Uh, yeah, probably, go on. I think a few of you, well, a few people watching might want to know about uh, our, our point of views. Um, there's one, the Magnuson incident, which I kind of want to talk about in a minute, but uh, oh, that's probably a, run, a rundown that's in that's not that's not an issue. A me. rundown in chronological dry. order of what happened. The massa. Verstappen one, people were going oh massa massa massa. I think both of them just a little bit. Really oh, on that one. I racy, saw yeah. that. It was racing. Literally, I was with my dad and I was like, "Massa still got that in his locker." What? He literally just died the inside of Verstappen. He literally did a Verstappen on on himself. Like he did a Verstappen to Verstappen. Um, massa did some aggressive. Like he had the contact with Perez in the first lap. He did the move on Verstappen, and there's another one later on where I think battling with Stroll like they got proper feisty like Massa gave you a good old court month and I was pretty impressed to be honest yeah. so um yeah the I think the incident made the, 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 incident made, the, made the it made the Pirelli tyre just look terrible it just deflated yeah. just like, <laughs> I mean it was borderline I'll say that I mean Verstappen sort of had nowhere to go let's be honest so yeah. well, there's the curb and that was it <laughs> it yeah, reminded like, me of an incident running with Weber. Over Weber lost his front wing in a, in a similar incident a couple of years back. It might have been 2012 mm. or 2013 when he went straight off at Parabolica because he had no front wing. Uh, but I can't remember what other driver. It might have been Massa, actually. I actually think it was Massa. <laughs> I don't know if anyone can... I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's, if that um... was Massa again, obviously he's had a history of doing that. But it just seemed like... you could, To be fair, if I think last year... I think the, the, the stewards might have looked into it a little bit more, but I think just because they've taken a step back, they've just been like, you know what? Yeah. You're both trying to squeeze into the corner. It's a tight corner. There's a bound to be. There's a, there's a contact on lap one. Although, fair play to everyone on lap one. No, this first time in years that no one's cut the turn two. No one's gone across. I don't know if you two noticed that or not. But that's the first time All in right, literally, yeah. I don't know how many years. Because I, 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 every that's year there's always been someone scooting. 
GP3 that morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, everyone everywhere. just goes straight on. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the difference was uh, you had three wide moment in GP3, though. Um, and then also yeah. there was a Magnussen Verstappen incident. That's kind of driving me. I don't, get what Mag- I don't get what Magnussen was on about. It, mate, you've been overtaken. What are you talking about giving you space? You, you've been done. You've been roasted. Just break and <laughs> just let the man go. Just take you've yourself off the barbecue because you're done. Yeah, yeah you're done. He was done. No, this made no me laugh because I watched the, uh, do you know how they make the, uh, the team radio thing, like a compilation yeah, the little of edit. the best ones? Yeah. And Magnussen was like, that was dangerous. That was terrible. You, re- you Honestly, like, how can you do that? Like, it wasn't even the fact that Verstappen was alongside him. But Verstappen was ahead of him. Like, he was far ahead of him. And yeah. Magnussen was like, you know that gap? Let me just squeeze down it. Oh, wait, there's no gap. Well, that I'm off my issue here was um, literally three corners before, on the way into turn one, Magnussen weaved right at the last second across. And that, yeah. Like, I told, I told my dad, and I literally said it, the two most aggressive drivers in the sport right now, I think they both can be a bit ruthless at times. And I think that pretty much summed it up. I think Verstappen can get a little bit um, big-headed, like, with that move. It'd be like, no, it's my race track. You can bugger off, mate. You can get, yeah. go down that escape road. And then Magnussen also has, the, the, like, he has the goal and, like, the audacity to say, oh, um, I'm not the dirtiest driver in the world or an F1, but then he actively tried to, like, swerve pretty much yeah. in the break zone in the turn one. So I've just... Whatever, like, do you know what I mean? They're just like that. Expect not the. Yeah, you're not, they're the not going to be changing anytime soon. Yeah, they're not going to be changing anytime soon. Simple as that. So yeah, um, yeah th- there wasn't no major instance that race where I was like, oh, that has to get addressed. And what was the other one? Um... Oh, Palmer and Alonso discuss. <laughs> oh, well, that oh, was just race, racing that... instance, getting the bin. <laughs> I was just a little bit. I just loved Alonso's reaction, to be honest. Well, I loved his I reaction. Really it was it. just a little bit you know, like Palmer. They were like, both course, petty, to be honest. Of course, Palmer just... cut across. And it, I mean, <laughs> the best one was just the Karma for Team Radio. Karma, yeah, yeah, it literally was. was to like... be fair, it, do you know, right, do you know, as a racer that obviously drives on, like, plays on games and stuff, you know, sometimes, like, it's just so easy just to let off and just let them go and have another go. But every driver always seems just... So, and this is probably just the racing driver's knowledge and ra- racing driver's instinct. They always overtake him. It was like, for example, last race with uh, Perez. It's just the fact that, come on, that you know you're going to get a penalty there. Just let off and just at least let, at least let one driver by, at least let the driver by, just so you can have another go straight away, not just take a penalty and then, obviously, karma yeah. rolls around. But yes. I don't know. I just Some drivers, I'm just yeah. like, why? Come on. I don't know. No major instance. I, I'm just, I was impressed with the fact that the term one was... Fine on lap one. Other oh, than yeah. that, yeah, um, no. Monza was a uh, it was a good race. I enjoyed it. Um, bit boring at times, but you know that's the first one I got to watch properly the entire race and not have to rush out to work either midway through or straight after. So I could actually digest that one fairly nicely. And um, once again, back on the podcast. So uh, I'm just glad that normality has re- has returned for <laughs> a weekend. Somewhat, least, somewhat. So um, yeah, yeah no, I think. I mean, um, I'm talking behalf of like the podcast here, but we're going to try and basically stick to this sort of Monday regime now. We'll try our best. So that way we all feature on here most of the time because it's got to the point where um, who are the regular hosts on this thing? <laughs> who now? Is, like, who is it? Who is a host? <laughs> I mean, does it, it doesn't help when, yeah, like the scenario of you two working can only really happen on the weekend. So that's always when a race yeah. is on. So... Um, yeah, so that's going to be, be that kind of admin. Obviously, also, um, a thing I saw last week, someone was asking where the audio one was. The SoundCloud really hasn't... I don't, I don't really know what to do it, do with it at the moment because at, at the moment it doesn't seem worthwhile because there's only like literally a percentile of people who watch it on YouTube actually clicking through. I think it'd be a lot better if we could set up an iTunes thing and I do want to... That's one of my goals for next year's new season of podcast from 2018 for the 20 season i really want to do set up an itunes version of it um but for now i think we'll put the audio up for this i think a lot last week it was a case i think of, we should finish off the season with the audio and then we'll assess yeah the options. i mean we'll um, see we'll see but we're, I think that's we're always looking much... to improve the podcast like we're always thinking of how to do it unfortunately this year we've just had a lot more um life in the way lots of stuff um so but... this year it's been harder so we've had to sort of take a step back and I think, realize, well, I think just actually, for a start. In a way, though, even though you say it's harder, we've actually been more consistent than last year because this point last year, we literally basically True. gave up with the podcast. So hopefully, like like Tom said, we're going to do Mondays 
Tuesdays ish sort of uploads yeah. for the race ones at least for the off off week off week ones we can do the weekend. But for the race ones, I think Monday and Tuesday, just to get all three of us actually on here and just so I'm not rushing around finding people, um, we'll do that. And in that way, we can actually just finish out the entire season. Whereas last year, there was a brief period of like three races, I think, where we were like doing it kind of like, you know, just last minute yeah. sort of stuff. It, um, it's, it's hard to squeeze it all in. But that's the thing. We want to do the podcast every week because the season's just like... I, I, I it's don't, been a great season. It's, yeah, it's a watch. weird feeling for us, but you guys are genuinely interested in what we want to say. So it's like, oh, well, okay, there is a demand there, but we want to obviously always be on, always be consistent. And on a season which is so tense and tight and amazing and we're all loving it, me as a Hamilton fan, Tom as a Ferrari fan, and Arav as an F1 fan, it's just like... Uh, you, yeah, we've got to, good, we want to get season. on top of it we, we just want to enjoy covering F1 again um, obviously yeah that's on Sky Sports how much, F1 how much how much we can watch of the races that will still be an issue at least for me um, the highlights are there I'll always try my best and I think um, all we can say is we're going to try and uh, feature here once again and actually be the regular hosts again on this podcast and try and push it in the right direction hopefully for next season we'll have big things in the pipeline Roll on the news that we all miss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's going to end it, guys. So if you have enjoyed it, hit that like button. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. As always, if you're new around here, then you get, do get subscribed to this channel for all the podcasts. Check out these two links in the bio. Also, obviously, our Twitters are always above our heads. So go follow us on there during the race weekends. Uh, well, maybe not so these two because these days they, they're working during the race these weekends. Days. But <laughs> on the weekends, at least I'm tweeting about F1 on the race weekends. And I'm sure I'll retweet everything. And that's how you get involved in the community, really, on Twitter uh, as a major part during the race weekends. Um, but, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you enjoy the rest of your days. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Goodbye.